Exhibit 29 Declaration of LLMG I, LLMG, declare under penalty of perjury that the following is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and recollection. I was born on, and I am 17. I am traveling with my son, DCMG, born. We are from Honduras. I came into the U.S. at about 5 p.m. I walked for about two hours before I found an immigration agent. I was taken directly to the Ursula Processing Center, where I have been held for 20 days today. Dee got sick with a fever and a cough after we were here for two days. I did not take him to the clinic because the other girls told me that if I did, I would stay longer. So I just put wet towels on his head. Dee had gotten sick on the trip, so I had medicine for him for the fever. But when immigration grabbed me when I first came to the U.S., they took it away. I got the flu two days ago. I'm still a little sick. I did not see the doctor. I am held with my son in a cage. There are about 60 people in my cages and more in some of the other cages. There are six cages in my area. They are all very, very full. There are narrow benches along three sides of the cages. At the beginning, they put all moms with children together, but now I'm with other girls who are 17, even if they don't have children. It's very crowded in the cage, so much so that the girls are lying on the floor and there's not even enough room for the baby to crawl, so I hold him all the time. We sleep on the floor on a mat. I only have one mat. I only get one thin aluminum blanket for me and my son. It's very cold all the time, and I have trouble sleeping at night because of the cold. My son gets so cold, he feels frozen to the touch. The lights are on all the time. There is a lot of noise all the time because they are girls and children who can't sleep and who cry a lot. We are all so sad to be held in a place like this. When I got here, I got a ham sandwich. The ham was slimy. I got water. There's water in the cell, but it tastes like bleach. I don't drink the water from the cooler because I'm afraid it will poison the baby because I'm still nursing. They give me a water in a bottle with each meal. In the morning at seven, they give me something they call a burrito with rice and beans inside, an apple, a cookie, and the water. They give me one jar of baby food for D. I breastfeed him. I don't make enough milk, so I have to give him some powdered milk. It made him silk at first. He isn't getting enough to eat, so I also feed him rice from the burrito. I don't get any snack, and neither does the baby. The next time we eat is lunch at noon, where we're given the same thing, except the burrito has a little bit of chicken in it. Then we don't eat again until dinner at four, when we get a sandwich with ham and lettuce, potato chips, and an apple. Every night the same. My son gets baby food. He also gets baby food at seven. I get a cookie at nine. That is all the food until morning. The toilet and sink are outside the cell in another cage. The toilets are portable toilets. I do not have soap, towel, or a toothbrush. Every five days, I get a shower. On that day, I get a toothbrush, but I can only use it then. I only bathe the baby when I bathe. In my, three cage, in my cage, there is a girl in a wheelchair. When she was in Mexico, she got cramps, and now she can't walk. No one is helping her. She's been here four days. An officer came and in front of all of us said it was a total lie that she was sick. Once, when we were just waiting to go to the shower, women officers came and told us that we got pregnant just to be able to come to the U.S. and that we weren't worth anything. No one has told me about my rights or Flores. I have not talked with a lawyer or anyone else who can help me. <clears throat> I, LLMG, swear under penalty of perjury that the above declaration is true and complete to the best of my abilities. This declaration was provided in Spanish, a language in which I am fluent, and was read back to me in Spanish. Signed, LLMG, June 10th, 2019. Certificate of Translation. 
I, Catherine Hagen, certify that I am fluent in English and Spanish, and that the above declaration to LLM was read in Spanish. Executed this 10th of June in McAllen, Texas. Signed, Catherine Hagen. Exhibit 17. Declaration of BPMM. I, BPMM, declare under penalty of perjury that the following is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and recollection. I, BPMM was born on, I am 16. My daughter, MJJM, was born on, she is eight months old. We are from Honduras. I was apprehended with my infant around May 28, 2019 in the afternoon. After crossing the river and walking for about half an hour, Border Patrol apprehended us. The agents transported us to an immigration center in a bus. The trip was about an hour. When we arrived at the center, I was given a bottle of water and a churro. They had no bottles, diapers, or anything for my baby. We were there for a short time and then transported to the dog pound. The trip took about 45 minutes. We arrived at the dog pound around 6 p.m. When we arrived, they took the clothes my baby was wearing and the backpack with all of her clothing, medicine, and milk. We were not given any food or water or anything to drink. We were put into a three-sided cage with the fourth side open to the outside, filled with loads of people, too many to count. Children, pregnant mothers, and mothers with babies. There was nowhere to sit. There were so many people. We had to wait for someone to stand up and quickly take their place on the ground. My baby was naked outside with no blanket for all four days we were there. We were freezing. My baby couldn't sleep because the ground was cement with rocks and in some places only rocks. And every time she moved, the sharp ground would scratch her. There were many pregnant women who had to sleep on rocks and I felt very badly for them. In the morning, we tried again to sleep because it was a little warmer. They gave me a rotten sandwich that I could not eat. They gave me a little bit of milk and told me to mix it with water for the baby. The water was very bad. I did not eat for over two days and the baby only had a very little bit of milk. The water came from a jug, smelled bad and people had to share cups. It was absolutely terrible, and I could not drink it. The baby had a cough and a cold when we arrived, and after the first day, the baby was much sicker. Her cough and cold were worse, and she had a very high fever. There were no doctors or medicine. The guards told me that keeping my sick baby outside would be good for her. There were many, many sick children there, a lot with fevers. When I would ask for diapers, I often had to wait for a very long time, and I was only given two to three baby wipes. I had to change the baby on the ground. Diapers were not given to children who were two years or older. The guard said they should not need them. During the day, I was incredibly hot and at night, it was very cold. There was only a small roof area with shade and people would crowd there trying to get away from the sun. It was the same every day we were there and suffered every day. Around 2 or 3 a.m. on the fifth day, we were brought here to the Arsola Processing Center. When we arrived, they took the baby's temperature. She had a high fever and they gave her medicine, clothes, and formula. 
we were put into a cage inside a large building. There are a lot of other mothers with children. There are not many places to sit and we have to sleep on very small thin mats on the floor. There are thin foil blankets only. It is very crowded and there is no room. The lights are very bright and they are on all the time and it's very noisy and impossible to sleep. My baby was sleeping on a mat in the middle of the night and the guards made me wake her up to take her to a changing area. There are seven portable toilets near the cage, but not inside. We have to get in line to go to the restroom. The toilets are extremely dirty. There's no water or soap to wash your hands. In the cage, there is a table with a jug of water and formula. The water is very bad. I use the bottled water from my meals to mix the formula for my baby. I only have one bottle to use over and over and no way to wash it. The day after we arrived here, my baby began vomiting and having diarrhea. I asked to see a doctor and they did not take us. I asked again the next day and the guard said, she doesn't have the face of a sick baby. She doesn't need to see a doctor. My baby daughter has not had any medicine since we first arrived. She has a very bad cough, fever, and continues to vomit and have diarrhea. We are only given baby food sometimes, but I'm afraid to ask too often because the guards are very mean. In four days, they have only given us baby food once. Before we came here, my baby was eating baby food regularly during the day, as well as eating some adult food. She cannot eat the food here. It makes the adult sick and would be worse for a baby. Since we arrived here, my baby has lost a lot of weight. Her pants are very loose now. She's not sleeping because she's sick and it is very loud. She cries a lot and is restless. The food here is terrible. The bread is bitter. The water in the jug is bad and makes me feel sick. And I use my bottled water to make the baby's blood bottle. When I ask for more water, the guards are very mean and tell me that the baby and I don't need it. I'm not able to eat or drink much. My stomach hurts and I have a headache all the time. I have lost a lot of weight here too. And I am very scared and anxious. It makes me feel very bad the way they treat us. It is hard being so young and being a mother. After eight days here at Ursula, we were finally able to shower and I was given clean clothes. I want to go to live with my father, S-R-M, who lives in North Carolina. His phone number is, I have not been told about our rights or what is going to happen to us. I, B, P, M, M, swear under penalty of perjury that the above declaration is true and complete to the best of my abilities. This declaration was read back to me in Spanish, a language in which I am fluent. B, P, M, M, date 11 de junio 2019. I, Kathy O'Gorman, certify that I am fluent in English and Spanish and that I read the above declaration to BPMM in Spanish. Executed this of June in McAllen, Texas. Kathy O'Gorman, Center for Human Rights and Constitutional Law. Exhibit 49. Declaration of EYFC, mother of ETMF. I, EYFC, declare under penalty of perjury that the following is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and recollection. My date of birth is, I'm from El Salvador. I'm the mother of ETMF. Her date of birth is, today is E's five month old birthday. I was apprehended with 
my 20 year old sister who was eight months pregnant and her three year old son. We crossed into the US by land and presented ourselves to border agents on or about June 14th, 2019. We were taken to a facility that was very cold. We were each given an aluminum blanket blanket. After about two or three hours, E and I were taken by bus to the Clint facility where we have been ever since. My sister and her son stayed behind. Yesterday, they told me my sister was released and is going to a place she can live with family. I wish E and I could be released too. I have been at the Clint facility for about three days. I don't wanna be here. I feel like I've been incarcerated. When I think of the days that E and I have already spent here, I start to cry. At Clint, I am fed three times a day. For breakfast, it is oatmeal with jello and juice. For lunch, I have soup, juice, and a cookie. For dinner, I have a burrito, jello, and juice. They have milk, but only give it to the babies. There is water here and we can drink it anytime with cups. I'm breastfeeding E. I do not know if baby formula is available. The room we are in is very crowded. There are about 30 people in a room, including about four kids younger than a year and a few who are about nine years old. I wish I could wear clean clothes. I've been wearing the same clothes for days. My pants were dirty when we got here, so officials took mine and gave me another pair to wear. I'm still wearing my own shirt, but it is dirty and has stains from breast milk on it. My socks have a hole and are dirty. E has also been wearing the same clothes for days. We have not been given an opportunity to change. The first two nights here, we had to sleep on the floor without a mattress. Last night was the first night we were given a mattress. The lights are turned off from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. It is cold in the room all the time. I have a lot of difficulty sleeping here. It's so cold, it's making people sick. I worry that E and I will get sick from the cold. The bathrooms do not have any walls. There is no privacy. Everyone can see me and when I am using the toilet, which is humiliating. We can wash our hands in the bathroom, but there is no soap to use. E and I have not been allowed to bathe since we were apprehended. We have also not been given toothbrushes or toothpaste. Some of the guards here at Clint are mad a lot of the time. When we ask them things, they respond in an angry way. I'm scared to ask them to raise the temperature because I don't wanna make them more angry. All of us feel scared of the guards getting angry. One day I was crying because I didn't wanna be here. A male guard came up and said to me, why did you come here if you don't like it? When I think about what he said, I start to cry. It is so difficult to be here. At times I am sobbing. There is a nurse here, but neither E or I have seen her. I don't think that there is a doctor here. I don't know if there are counselors, social workers, or mental health professionals here. I don't know when I will be released. I wanna go live with E's father in Washington, DC. He is here legally. However, yesterday an official who was a woman told me that I would have to be here one and a half to two weeks longer. Even though I wanna live with E's father, they said that there wasn't space available for us anywhere else. Other girls have told me that they have been here 20 to 26 days. The girl whose mat is next to mine said she's been here more than 20 days. Whenever I think of how long other girls have been here and how long E and I might be here, I start to cry. This is not a place where children and babies should be. Just like me and E, other girls here have family members who can care for them in the United States. I don't know if I can call my mother. I have not been told about any rights my daughter or I may have under Flores. There are children here who are very young, only two or three years old, and their mother is not with them. They cry for their mothers all the time. Other children who are older try to take care of the little ones. It is an incredibly sad situation. I, EYFC, swear under penalty of perjury that the above declaration is true and complete to the best of my abilities. This declaration was provided in Spanish, a language in which I am fluent and was read back to me in Spanish. Date, 6-17-2019. Certificate of Translation. I, Elora Mukherjee, certify that I am fluent in English and Spanish and that I read the above declaration to EYFC in Spanish. Executed this 17th of June in Clint, Texas. Elora Mukherjee, name of translator, Morningside Heights Legal Services Incorporated, Columbia Law School.